The next three days, hopefully, you're here to make the hockey club. There's a roughly 12 players that are here that participated with us last year. I've been known to make a few changes through the course of the year. But there's two kinds of hockey players that I really like. One with all kinds of ability, but more important, one that plays with his heart. And if you give me a guy with that combination, you'll be here and it's going to be one hell of a camp. Mr. Maxner, you were so passionate when you were talking to your players. They're sitting in the stands and you're giving them a wonderful speech. Did you prepare that in advance or was it just something that came natural to you? It actually is something that comes natural to me uh, because of the fact you're dealing with people and people are no different. It's just the way you approach and the kids uh, have been around, around long enough now that I can read them and it really helps to be honest with them. Right. And you seem like a great people person. I think the players must have responded really well to that. Very well. And uh, then I had a session with the parents uh, at the same rink. And uh, just to get them used to what they're going to hear from me to their children, who I'm in charge of now. So right. it's very, very important that we have uh, a, a, sed a steady uh, way to handle things. Right, like a, a great support system um, for your players, so. Yes. And was that something that you always did? You always made sure to make contact with the parents, um, so everyone was really on the same page, all in all. That's very important to do, even this day in life. Perfect. Now, the most important thing is, I want you to stay in your positions, and no match penalties. All right, this is... Uh, the last thing I want is a match penalty. And I want to emphasize that a little more, okay? If there's a fight break zone, you got to go to the bench. And I want to pick the best 19 hockey players for this hockey club out of that room and this room. And when today's over, if you give them your best and don't make it, that's all you can ask for. When you were coaching, was it more important for you to develop the team as Spitfires as a whole to win a Memorial Cup or was there a bigger focus on graduating your players to the NHL? Um, mm -hmm. what, what would you say about that? I would say, very importantly, you develop people for two, three, four ways of life. And one is be yourself, develop your skills, uh, and the uh, NHL will develop itself. Uh, junior hockey, when your son's going to play here, and uh, develop him as a person and as a hockey player. And if he develops both, he'll make the National Hockey League with a real positive attitude. Right. It was probably a great opportunity, especially when um, the Spitfires were a farm team for the Red Wings. I bet that, that really put some fire under some guys um, having an opportunity like that. Oh, it certainly did. And uh, uh, they didn't have uh, far to go mm -hmm. to come up for a game or two. and. Uh, uh, it's it's really a nice uh, time to be affiliated with such a fine team. Yeah, definitely bonus being so close to the border. Yes. Yeah. Did you 
want Livingston? Yeah, we had him down here, yeah. The guy with the glasses? Yeah, the little guy with the glasses played in Bell River last year. Yeah. And we also want to have a look at this guy here. Okay, Timmy Robinson? Yeah. Look for Jet with Cheetos. Bring them in first. All right, first of all, uh, this is probably one of the hardest parts of my job, you know, I get, and it gets tougher as I go along. We're going to cut down to 19 hockey players. First reaction is, you're disappointed you didn't make our hockey club. If you're not, I would be very surprised and I'd be hurt myself. The second thing is, it's not the end of the world. Now, if I get a Brent Jarrett hurt, Okay, I got a Danny Millett down in Chatham. Okay, I got a Mike Shields down in Chatham. How many players roughly were you normally inviting out to camp? Between uh, maybe 23 to 30, uh, because you know you're uh, you're going to have a maybe a, some kids come in on a border, and you might have to put them in midget or junior B to get better to play. But as a rule. Uh, you don't want to uh, have to go to a lot of people and say, you're not going to make it, you got to go home. I, don't, I didn't like that part of the game. So I kept our uh, uh, people down to probably between uh, 24 and 30. Okay. And you mentioned not your favorite part of the game, you know, telling players that they didn't make it. Um, would that still be the hardest part of the game for you if you were recruiting a team right now? It, it's always a hard part, but it's not hard because you're honest. And if you're honest, you can go to sleep at night. Right. If you're not honest and prolong somebody's ability to get to, to be a, a junior hockey player, then you feel good about everything. Yeah. And maybe for some of the gentlemen who have been cut or are in the process, what advice would you give them? Don't get down on yourself and uh, here's how you're going to improve. I want to see you back here next year, or I, uh, you know, if things happen, I might call for you for Christmas. So just keep developing yourself and stay positive. Thanks.
little bit about the atmosphere outside the barn, inside the arena, what the fans were like. What was that all about? It was all about coming to a hockey game and enjoying life. And uh, I was very, very happy to be part of Windsor Spitfires. And uh, those people, uh, they would say hi and hello, how are we going to win tonight? And, uh, you know, you're always positive with them and uh, jokingly about other things. But the crowd that used to come to the barn were fantastic people. And uh, they treated the players and myself and our staff as well as any hockey team in the country. Can you come down at, uh, by 11.30? Uh, I want to have a little chat with you. Okay. Yeah. Here. No, no, here out of the city. No, he would be traded to another team. All right. So uh, I'll put it on the telex at uh, quarter to 12. All right. Talk to you later. Looking back to Rolly Melanson and the trade for John Odom, what was going on there? What's, uh, what were your thoughts when you made that initial trade? Well, the initial trade is we needed a defenseman, a tough defenseman, big, and uh, they wanted a goaltender because of the time of the year and so forth. And uh, Roland played very well for us, and he was a good uh, player, and you know he was going to go on in life, but we had to shore up the back end. Yeah. and get some toughness, which we did, and we had another goalie uh, at that time. So everything worked out fine for us and worked out fine for Roland, I mean, as life went on. But as a rule, both teams were winners. When you guys were on these bus trips, was it a great opportunity for you to bond with the guys with no one else around? Yeah, it was good, especially uh, where we're situated here geographically. Uh, on a Thursday night, we would play here, of course, and uh, play in Ottawa Friday night. So we'd leave right after the game and go as far as we could. And one night, I kind of fell asleep. And Kenny, I woke up and all I saw was snow. And I said, are we going to go all the way? He says, yeah, we'll be there in an hour and a half. <laughs> and that was a true story. And we got there and uh, got to bed. I think it was maybe 3.30, 4 in the yeah. morning. But it was good because we made the trip. We got there safely. And we didn't have to worry about driving all day. And the kids got a lot of rest. Yeah. Was there ever an instance where you remember there was really, really bad weather and you guys were on the road? Well, there has been a few times, but not overly. We're, we're very cautious. Yeah. If there was a lot of bad weather, you'd just slow down. Yeah. And uh, on the way home, if it was a bad game, did you find that the bus trips were, they felt a little bit longer coming back after maybe a loss? Well, the bus trips wouldn't be as bad as some of the players yeah. and myself. Like, you have to realize that if you haven't played well, you're taking that home with you, and you are, we're going to sit down and we're going to discuss it, why you lost or uh, why we got beat. And uh, it's a team effort, so I would wait. I wouldn't take, talk to them on the bus. There's no sense of bringing it up there. Wait till you get 
back the next day, at practice, have a meeting, bring it down to earth so then that doesn't happen the next time. Right. Yeah. It was, an, it was important in a lot of ways, these bus trips then. Oh, sure, they were. Power of positive thinking. I mean, you have to always instill things in people. Oh, oh, let's go, come on! Come on, guys, come on, let's go! Good job, guys. Come on, big dance, be going up there, come on! There's no way he's going to go to the same But see, I really don't have... See, he needs a right winger. He's been using Leaf on the right side, Hunter on the right side, Miles on the right side. So he probably wanted a checker. So he wanted uh, Mitchell for me. Yeah, you finished the deal? Yeah. For Rutland. For Rutland. a rough road trip and you're giving the guys a speech why was that so important to get to get them back on track well first of all we're going in the playoffs later on and uh, those are two last games on the road and uh, Ottawa always had a good hockey club and uh, definitely Peterborough 
and those are two places that we felt were going to be in the finals in junior hockey and we had to prove that we could play the game and challenge those people in the game down to being against them and that's why uh, we lost both games on the road we played well but not good enough uh, disciplined to a couple penalties and we, you can't have that in the playoffs so we wanted to have a session on the bus and we brought that up and uh, then we uh, get back home and we had to go through practices and develop our teams to tighten up because Peterborough are a tight hockey club and they're a one goal hockey club and uh, so as it should have happened where did we end up? We ended up playing them in the final. You knew all along. We, well, our kids really responded after that uh, weekend, and we uh, won our division and so forth. Uh, Peterborough had a good hockey club, well-disciplined hockey club, but uh, we, we gave them everything we had. <laughs> Wide open. Gentlemen, the defenseman's supposed to come across and pick up that guy. What about the guy breaking for the net? Does he? Yeah. That's it. Stay with it. Stay with it. That's it. nice to win and everything else but hey we got to play Sunday and it's going to be tougher than what we just finished with. First round of the playoffs next up on the list you guys had the Niagara Ice Dogs. From the looks of it it was a pretty rough game hard hitting fast pace. Tell me a little bit about that series. It was a tough series. Uh, because I had played my junior hockey there. And of course the fans didn't want us to win. So they were on me pretty good. 
and uh, although I had a great career when I was there, but uh, you know they wanted their team to win, yeah. and I wanted our team to win, and we won. So it, there was a, lo a few fisticuffs in that series, and uh, we stood up for ourselves, and consequently, we were a little much for them. They said uh, turned over, so we won the. Uh, the championship that night, and away we go. Drops it back to Julian. Julian on the left side for the roof. JP winds up. That shot blocked and cut. Fuller clears the rebound down the ice. The 2 0 3. Remains. Let's talk about the legendary Dave Quinn. Quinner, as you would say. He was our TV radio guy. Any funny stories about that guy? We haven't got two days. It was really awesome to have him around. He did a great job for us as a team. He was a great announcer. And uh, I met him the first time I ever met him, where uh, he was in the Get the Haircut. Okay. And uh, as you can see uh, in some maybe drafts that we have of him, he had a lot of hair. <laughs> but uh, he was a great guy to have on your bus. He was a good a person to have for your hockey club and did a great job with the players. What do you think about tomorrow night, Dennis? They're going to win. There's no question about it. Good luck tomorrow night. Okay, thanks. Wayne? You can still see the heart and soul of Spitfire's fans. Would you say they're the best fans in the league? Well, I've been in a lot of buildings uh, as a coach and a manager, and uh, to a lot of hockey games, and I think the Windsor fans stand out above and beyond any other building in the league. And I don't mean that to be facetious, but uh, when I was here, it's been wonderful. And uh, do I miss it? Yes, I do. Am I getting older? A little bit, but uh, I'm still very active. But right now, I'll tell you right now, these are the best fans in the world and have been for a number of years.
You guys had just beaten the Brantford Alexanders and won the division. What was that like? Uh, it was very, very worthwhile uh, with our hockey club because they, they have worked hard all year and uh, we played very disciplined against them and we got good goaltending, of course, uh, in the playoffs. And uh, consequently, uh, we scored enough goals. We played discipline is a big word in, in the playoffs. And uh, don't take cheap penalties. Uh, and uh, as a result, we won. We can see that the guys are heading back to the dressing room and even in the narrow hallways. Somehow there's fans lined up through those hallways. How did they get there? What was that like? Tell me. Well, it was very exciting and uh, very emotional, uh, especially for the fans. The players, uh, you know, feel that they uh, have to get in. But uh, I used to go in front because, you know, you didn't want an accident to happen. Uh, because we should have had more uh, security in the hallway. But I couldn't have a player stepping on somebody's foot. So I made sure that there was enough room for the players to get to the dress room. But it was beautiful for the fans to be able to even touch somebody because uh, they felt part of the team. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing right now. I'm not saying anything against Roland Melanson or uh, anybody else, but I think our two goaltenders uh, this year, Dylan down the stretch, Sean had a good game today, Jimmy won us a game in there, building 7-3. Not one or two, every guy contributes somewhere along the way, and we talk about that all the time. Now, we're going to work out tomorrow at noon. I better find out first if I get iced at noon, and we'll leave at 2 o'clock. Any mother. Where did I see her the other day? How did you manage to get Ted Lindsay into that dressing room? And what was it like for the guys? They seemed really fired up. It was really exciting. And uh, it, it was a peace of mind because of Ted and I are friends from way back. And uh, bringing him in and being part of this organization at that time, he was delightful because when I went over to Detroit, I ended up being a partner with Ted. And uh, he was at all our games and uh, always drove the big Cadillac. But uh, on that particular night, I just enjoyed that, giving the opportunity. He's a die-hard man, and one tough man as a player. And he just never lost his kindness to people. Treat people like you like to be treated, and could continue to do that. And that's that's why everybody's happy. Yeah. And we have our local guy, Ernie Godin. Any funny stories you can share about him? The funny story is he was great. He was a small hockey player, but he came to play every night. And he was a tough young hockey player. Uh, and he is another player that came every night. And that's why people came. They liked Ernie Godin, the way he played the game. And he played it tough for his size. Uh, he, was, he was a gang type of hockey player. He charged in that, scored a lot of goals, and he had great uh, eye contact uh, in the zones. And uh, he went on and uh, went to Toronto, and I went to see him play in, in uh, uh, one game. And I said, what do you want to fight for, Ernie? Get out of there. And uh, other than that, he's a quality person, and a, it was a quality player. Are you going to get one of those play cuts? Come on, dog, you're taking a punch on the stuff. 
Do I make my arms for a dog? No. We'll give them to you in your butt. Oh, oh I had them. Oh, you guys already got drunk. It's a hell of a club to fight back with all the time. Let's us let them chase us for a change. Three. Three. Ernie Airline starts. You're on right wing, and, and Mitch on left, and uh, Claude and uh, JP. Sean, let's go to work. Come on. Come on. Finally, your series against Peterborough, what was that like? It was a tough series. It was a real tough series. They had a little more experience than we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, consequently, I thought our players played as well as they could have. And uh, we showed them that uh, we had a quality hockey club. And as time went on, uh, it took us another year to develop some of the players we had. and. Uh, they had an older team than we did, and uh, but they didn't uh, go on to win the Memorial Cup, I don't think. Yeah. Try, guys. Just sit down for a sec. I think it's been a pretty good year, considering uh, all that's been accomplished, uh, trades and players picked up on waivers, and uh, just the guys that contributed throughout the course of the year. We all had our moments. We've all had our hardships. We've all had the glorious times. But nothing comes easy. And I'll tell you, you give it what you had. You didn't quit. Right to the bitter end. And it's just nice to be associated with you guys all year. Unfortunately, things didn't go the way we had planned, didn't get the dub, but was there anything you would do differently? Not really because of the fact we were developing players at that time and uh, the team that beat us was a team that was together for a big time. And uh, we were very happy. Uh, we supported uh, everybody and the players gave what they had. And uh, unfortunately, they just we didn't have enough uh, depth to go on and beat them. And uh, as it turned out, you know, Windsor came along and uh, added a few players later on in life, and uh, continued and won the Memorial Cup. So I think it's very important over the years that you do what you can do, and and big thing is come to the ring every day and work. And I don't mean just for a game, practice too. And uh, then the fans that are the best I think in this league uh, will be there to support you. The legendary Gordy Howe. Do you have any memories for us about him? I yes, I do. You know, Gordy was a great man, a great hockey player, but he was a good person, a great person. And one day. 
I'm playing against them uh, in Detroit. And Bill Friday was the referee. And all of a sudden, I touched Gordy, and he gave, uh, Bill Friday says, Maxner, you got a penalty. Get in the box. And I said to him, are you kidding me? What? He said, hold him. I said, who in the world could hold him? I can't. I got two minutes. It's impossible. So later on, you know, Gordy and I, uh, I said, how, do, how could I hold you? He says, you can't. <laughs> and, you know, that was it. But, yeah. And then you're, the next year, he worked for Simpsons on the, uh, he, uh, on the road he, in the summertime. Gordy Howe used to go all over Canada uh, as we go on in life. We have to learn every day, you know? Yeah. That's great. That's my phone. <laughs> great cuts. That's Let me use these. <laughs> That's my phone. You hear the hockey? Yeah. I'm Wayne Maxner. There's two types of hockey players I really like. One has talent and the one has a big heart.